Hello, friends. So we want to ask the Lord to forgive us. Okay, here in the Matthew, the sixth chapter of Matthew, 12th verse, it says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In another translation, it says, forgive our offenses as we have forgiven those who have offended us. And in another translation, it says, forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And again, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So all of these things are wrongdoings. They're sins that we've committed or others have committed against us. So the first question is, have we asked the Lord for forgiveness? We can ask the Lord for forgiveness. And we can be, uh, become forgiven through prayer. As we can see here, Jesus wouldn't say this in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our offenses. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our trespasses. He wouldn't say that if it were not possible to get forgiveness. So what we want to do, brothers and sisters, is ask the Lord for forgiveness and then forgive others. And I say do this by name in prayer. Think about the people that you have an offense against and forgive them in prayer by name. Because he says, as, you know, so you forgive, you ask for forgiveness as we forgive others. So if we are not forgiving others, we are going to have things that the Lord is going to, uh, you know, have against us. First of all, if you can't forgive others, then you have pride in your heart. And pride is an offense against the Lord. So it's very important that we forgive others so that we are forgiven. <clears throat> Now, what religion, some religion will want to do is place boundaries on forgiveness. And I want to talk a little bit about forgiveness and a little bit about repentance and the difference between forgiveness and repentance. Because repentance is work. Forgiveness could be work too. Matter of fact, forgiving others, it can be a work of repentance if it's something that we've had a difficulty doing. But I want to speak about repentance with respect to listening. You know, Jesus says, for those that have ears, let them hear. And for those who have eyes, let them see. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. He says this many times because hearing and listening are two different things. Hearing involves opening up our ears and hearing noises, right? But listening involves doing work. We ask, often we'll hear this, you know, said parents to children, you're not listening to me. Why are we saying they're not listening? Because their ears are not receiving what we say in doing, following up with, with works. So what happens to the children who do not listen? If you continue to be a child who does not listen, you're giving, a, you know, a commandment in the house or you're giving a task to do whatever it may be, and, you, and the, the child does not listen over and over and over again, that it becomes an offense in the house. It begins to bleed over and other children don't listen. So what ends up happening is you end up removing that person from the house. All right, so what we do is we love on our children. We love them. We love them with everything we got. We forgive them. We love them over and over again. But we speak what they need to hear with respect to obedience. Okay, we speak to our children about what they need to hear with respect to truth. And we have boundaries in the house because love has boundaries. And when we set the boundaries and the child doesn't listen to us, doesn't obey, then eventually that's, that doesn't work anymore. And it's the same thing with our heavenly parent, brothers and sisters. Our heavenly parent is wondering, are we listening? First of all, do we care? Do we even read the word of God? Do we care about his truths? And when we read it, do we listen? Jesus had seven messages to the seven churches in Revelations. I, I recommend that everybody read Revelation second and third chapter, where he speaks to seven churches about each of the seven churches' issues. Every church was part of his body, right? Every church had different problems, though. And we can see that that's the way it is these days, too. Churches, you know, there's war going on in the church. 
as far as on the, in the spiritual realm. But he speaks to every church and he says this common thing to every church. He talks to them about to him who overcomes, first of all. He's speaking to the overcomers. But then he says, I know your works. Okay, so repentance involves work. Forgiveness is the grace of God. And we can receive forgiveness through prayer as we can see here. But that's not where the work is. Well, sometimes it is if we have to forgive others. Sometimes it is if we have to ask forgiveness. Sometimes just humbling our heart is work. A work of repentance to humble our heart. But then how is it after that? That's the question. Once we've received the grace of God and his love, how do we work? How do we do our life as a child of God? How do we do our life as a child in our own household? Do we begin to do work of repentance? If we're a child in our own house, we begin to say, you know what? I think I'm going to be obedient. Why? Because my parents love me. They don't say this because they just want to be mean. My parents love me. Same with our heavenly parent. He tells us the things he wants us to do because it's the best thing for us. His love says, I want to give you the best life. Listen to me and you'll have it. I want you to be with me in my kingdom. I want you to be in me, with me in my house. We say to our children, I want you to live here with my, in my house. Parents, you know, through love, they want the children around. But not if the children are offensive. If the children continue on to just follow their own way and be in rebelliousness, then they can't be in the house. And that's, the, that's exactly the picture of heaven. So we need to ask forgiveness from the Lord. We want to forgive others around us and we want to live a life of repentance, doing the work of listening, making changes in our life where we need to make changes. We don't want to be a rebellious child. On Judgment Day, we definitely don't want to be looking at the Lord and saying, I didn't even want your forgiveness. I didn't want to forgive anybody else and I certainly didn't want to follow your ways. All of those things land us into a kingdom that's outside of the kingdom of heaven. It's called the kingdom of death. All right, it's, a call, it's called the kingdom of darkness because those that are, follow rebellion go to that place. All right, we don't want to get into that. There's a lot here in this one verse. So my question is, have you asked the Lord to forgive you? I plea with you, my friend. Ask the Lord for forgiveness today for all of your sins, all of your shortcomings. And then in prayer, begin to impart grace and forgive everybody else that's offended you in your life doesn't dismiss what they've done, doesn't take it away, doesn't remove the trauma, doesn't, doesn't remove the abuse, doesn't remove the actions that were done against you to offend you. That's not the point. Jesus will take care of that. The Lord will bring justice. What we do is we choose to release the person and forgive them. So be forgiven even now of all of your sins and trespasses, all of your iniquity, all of your offenses. Be forgiven. You've got to receive it We've got to be gracious children and receive the love of God and the grace of God in our life. And then please, my friend, forgive everybody around you. People get healed in their own bodies when they forgive other people. This is true. So I pray this message blesses you with the power of forgiveness in your life. Let it become your way. Let it be that we, we function, we listen as children of God and we love the Lord and we love others as only God can do it in us. Only he can give us the grace to forgive and the grace to ask forgiveness and humble our heart. So I pray this message blesses each one today in Jesus name. Amen.